Welcome to this presentation about performing a linear regression using PSPP. I know you may be scared like Homer on the picture to the left, but don't be scared. Today, we are going to perform a linear regression using PSPP. But don't fret, we're not going to do this in one big push. We're going to break it up into small steps. First, we will import the data. Then we will state the hypothesis test, the rejection rule, and supporting details. Afterwards, we will actually use PSPP to conduct the regression and examine the output. Last but not least, we'll give the APA presentation of our findings and review the takeaways from this presentation. The first step is to import your data just like you've done in previous units. Also, make sure the column headings are actually the variables. The required reading showed you a few different ways to state the hypotheses for a regression analysis. The first way to state it is right here. This is basically the test of whether beta is equal to zero or beta is not equal to zero. If you don't like using that language, you can use something like this. You can say, hey, the null hypothesis is there are no significant regressors. Or alternatively, you can say there is at least one significant regressor. The key thing to remember is both styles say exactly the same thing. We also need to state the rejection rule. We reject the null hypothesis when p is less than alpha, where alpha is set to 0.05. Also, we want to use the confirmation rule that zero is not within the 95% confidence interval. All this, you know, stat talk distills down to a simple question or a simple idea. Is beta in our linear regression or our best fit line significantly different than zero? If it is, the regressor x is significant. If it's not, then we don't have any significant regressors. If you recall, the survey data collected information from a whole bunch of people regarding their income, debt, stock holdings, and other financial measurements. In this example, we're going to see whether debt relates to income. We can figure this out by performing a linear regression and seeing if beta is statistically significant and non-zero. If it is, we know that we can model or estimate or predict income using debt. Now let's take everything we figured out thus far and put it to work. So far, we figured out the dependent variable is income and the independent variable is debt. We know that from the previous slide. We also know the hypotheses for a regression. We also know the rejection rule. When P is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. And for most cases, alpha is 0.05. Also, we're gonna check the confirmation rule to see whether zero is in the 95% confidence interval. So what are we really asking here? We are asking whether there is a statistically significant estimation of a participant's income using debt. Or in layman's terms, can we use debt to estimate someone's income and be self-assured that the statistics in doing so are sound? Now that we know everything we need to know, we can actually begin to run the analysis. To begin, click Analysis, Regression, and Linear. After you click Linear, a dialog box will appear. The dialog box is going to ask you for some information, in particular, the dependent and independent variables. Just like we figured out in a previous slide, income is the dependent variable, debt is the independent variable. Move those variables over to their respective boxes. After moving the variables over to their boxes, click the Statistics button. Another window will appear, and make sure you check on Coefficient, Confidence Interval, and R. Once you have these checked on, click Continue. Now everything is ready to go. 
All you have to do is click OK to run the regression. Click OK, give the computer a moment, and you'll see the results pop up. The output window contains all the results you need. As you can see, the R squared value for your model is right here. PSPP reports the regressor in a row format. The highlighted row is everything to do with the debt variable. Your beta value, or standardized coefficient, is right there. The significance, or p-value, is located right here. And you can see the confidence interval, 95%, is listed all the way to the right. You should notice zero is in the confidence interval. That tells us we likely do not have a significant regression. Also, you could check out the p-value and see that it is way bigger than 0 0.05. Therefore, we cannot reject the null hypothesis, or we fail to reject the null hypothesis, and we find that we do not have a significant regressor. Now we have all of our findings, and it is time to write them up using APA format. You open with a level two heading stating the hypothesis test and then follow up with the test. After you state the test, you follow up with what actually happened as a result of conducting the test. We found that income could not be predicted using debt because there was no significant regression. As you can see, all the way at the very end of the sentence, I have a parenthetical comment containing beta, r squared, and p in that order. These are the results the reader will need to know to ensure that they understand your results and be aware that the p-value was unable to reject the null hypothesis. This is key. If they don't know the p-value, they won't believe your results. So when you report an insignificant finding for a regression, use a format similar to this and your reader will be okay. So. We made Homer happy in the end. What are the takeaways? Well, PSPP can be used to perform a linear regression. And you can find it under Analyze Regression in Linear in PSPP's menu. When performing a regression, it is important to obtain the coefficient, confidence interval, and R. Also, we had an example that was insignificant. But in the form, you'll find a slide deck showing you how to report in insignificant and significant results. And last but not least, the most important thing is, regressions do not have to be difficult. As you noticed, you are able to perform a regression just using a few steps. That's the power of using software to help you do these sort of things. Good luck, and I hope you do well on your regressions.